this is the second time since I put my hand on the Bible to be sworn in as mayor of this city that we have gathered um, at a hospital emergency room for a shooting of a Philadelphia police officer. Um, and I just want to pause for a moment about that. Uh, our police officers are on the front lines of our city, our city, every day and every night putting their lives on the line to protect and serve us. Um, this is another reminder uh, of the senseless and all too present gun violence here in the city of Philadelphia. Um, a grateful city thanks the officer for his service and the rapid response of our first responders. I thank them as well. In the days and weeks ahead, um, there will be thorough investigations of this incident, as there should be every time. Um, and let me cle be clear, um, no matter um, how frustrating um, these two incidents that we've experienced thus far, um, there is nothing that will get in the way of us all working together as a team to make our city safe. Thank you all so very much. So, so, good morning, everyone. Um, so, it's this morning, our Narcotics Bureau was serving seven warrants across various sections of the city. At 6.04, they served a warrant at 1328 King's, King's Place, uh, upon making uh, the first breaching officer. There's 10 officers in the breaching team. There's a marked car, two marked cars out front of the property, as well as a marked car in back of the property. The two front cars out front, one of them are a hospital case, just in the event that we do have an incident. While making that breach into the first door and moving to the second door, a shot is fired. The officer takes one shot to his ballistic vest, hitting the right side. We believe that ricocheted and struck his hand. He is in great condition, he's stable condition, and has already been released. Uh, we have two individuals, one we are detained, one is in custody, an Asian male, and that investigation continues into this process. I'm really grateful. I know I have the chief of narcotics, T. Flacco, and a team here. Most recently, seven months ago, they were able to get enhanced ballistic vests to go over top of their vests, as well as ballistic helmets. We believe that played a significant role in that process. But here's what I'll say to you as we've been talking about these last few weeks, uh, last few days around the incidents involving my officers. As someone who spent 15 years in narcotics, it is one of the most dangerous operations to execute is doing search warrants on a property. You are always at a disadvantage when you go into those properties because you do not know what's on the other side. And so I continue to be proud of all of my men and women. And now we're talking about my guys, my men and women who have been hitting doors for years. The officer involved here has been on 33 years, 27 years in, and his team has been doing this work in our communities on a daily basis. And we know that risk. This is part of the work. And so as the mayor continues, we're going to continue to do the work in our communities to make our communities safe. And, then, and we're grateful that this officer has not been harmed. I mean, harmed. he did receive an injury, but he's going to be fine. We could be talking about something different. So I'm really grateful for the operation, the team that our college has done to really enhance those safety uh, things that we're using with our officers. But, but we're grateful today. But I just want the community to continue to understand the challenges that we face in this city. But as the mayor said, we're going to meet these challenges. We're going to continue to work. And our narcotics team is going to continue to move forward because they know we are, say, an important role in the policing and keeping our city safe. So I want to thank you for that. And we'll stop in to see if there's any questions. Question about the ballistic vest. Is that a level three ballistic vest I, that you guys just? I believe it's even beyond that. Can somebody speak to the level of vest that Nart Spot is wearing? We'll get you that information. And was that a, a recent upgrade to the Yeah, department? I'm told about seven months ago they were able to upgrade. So whenever they're doing search warrants, all the men now are wearing, they're wearing the vest. They're putting another ballistic vest over top of that, and they're wearing ballistic helmets. Is it fair to say that saved his life? There's very high probability it could. I mean, we don't know that with a degree of certainty. We don't know what kind of weapon hit him at this point, but that's very, listen, I told you 15 years ago, we didn't have that. And the fact that they're moving forward to continue the enhancements, because we need to do that, and we need to do everything. The mayor whispered in my earlier that said, Kevin, whatever they need to keep our men and women safe, you put it on the paper and you bring it forward. And I appreciate those comments from her. And that process is done, and we we'll continue to look for those safety enhancements for our men and women to stay safe when they're operating in this, in this manner. Commissioner, can you tell us if this was a no-knock warrant, or did they announce the presence when they, when they were at the Well, door? listen, I mean, part of narcotics is the announcement. But even moreover, when I talked to lieutenant on location, we have two marked cars out front, as well as a marked car in the back. And so, you know, I don't have the particulars as, as it relates to that. That is part of the requirement of knocking and announcing before you enter. 
but oftentimes folks are not listening or at this point don't care. And that'll be through the investigation to determine and, you know, what happens through that process. Did the police fire back at all? The, fire, the officers not fired their weapons. Once they, they engaged and he was shot, they backed out. And then my understanding, the individual inside surrendered. Well, listen, I mean, I, again, I, I think it's not about closeness, it's just the realities of the danger. Every day where we, we have those, well, we see it, it manifests itself in our Kentucky community when we have countless shootings and countless homicides. And so it's not, you know, out of the order that my men and women who put themselves in that way to defend that work are going to take fire. We know that. Like every man and woman who comes on this job understands the inherent dangers of the job. Our goal is to try to minimize it, to use all the tools effectively to do our proper assessments of what those locations are and oftentimes you'll see our SWAT team when we know we have a high risk warrant and we know we're going to be encountering somebody who is going to fire upon us then we're going to use our, our our SWAT team to do that work but that's the inherent danger so we don't we don't shy away from that all of us who come into this space understand that's part of the work I just want the community to understand what we're sacrificing when we do that the sacrifice these men and make work to say keep drugs out of our communities is a sacrifice and this highlights that when you see one of my officers shot, what that work entails. Mayor, you've been thrust uh, into leadership opportunities immediately upon serving here. What's it like to speak on this back to back in weeks? And where are you at with this now so far in your heart? Well, I will tell you that it has done absolutely nothing except strengthen my resolve and the commitment that I made to the people of our city that one, we would do our best to make sure the best and brightest people were serving us. Um, I've been uh, nothing but grateful for the leadership of Police Commissioner Bethel, along with the entire team that you uh, see here today. And uh, the commitment was very simple. If we all work together, we make the city safe, clean, green, with that economic opportunity for all, and we're not going to stop. And there are multiple ways uh, that we do that. But when a circumstance such as this arises, it requires that uh, the commissioner affirm what, what has happened, that an investigation has taken place, uh, but the danger. And that's the reality of doing the job. And I appreciate you, Commissioner, just affirming that for the benefit of the public. This is what they deal with on a daily basis. But as mayor of this city, I will not allow anything to get in between my commitment to ensure the public health and safety of all of our people uh, in the city of Philadelphia. We deserve it. Thank you all so very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you've been listening to uh, Mayor Sherelle Parker and Police Commissioner uh, Kevin Bethel there regarding a shooting this morning around 6 o'clock this morning on the 1300 block of King's Place. A officer with the Narcotics Division was serving a warrant when he was shot in the hand. So what happened, according to the police commissioner, is that he says standard operating procedure is that the officers announce that they are there to serve the arrest warrant. Uh, they say when the officers encountered uh, this suspect, apparently a shot was fired. It hit the officer in his ballistic vest, and that bullet ricocheted, and that's what hit him in the hand, according to the police commissioner there. Uh, still, we're going to flesh out some of the details here, but we can tell you that that officer right now is in Stable condition has been released from the hospital, according to the mayor and to the police commissioner. And they also told us that two suspects were taken into custody uh, from the scene there. Of course, we'll continue to follow this breaking news story for you and bring you any additional updates as we get them.